Today, I'm gonna to review and compare a whole bunch of solid state drives so that you can make the best decision on which solid state drive to choose for expandable storage for your computer. So these are all SSDs between two and four terabytes, and we're gonna look at all of them. We're gonna talk about them because there's lots of options and there's lots of price differences between these. So we're gonna jump right into it. We're gonna start out with one of the ones that I've been using for a while, which is the SanDisk. This is the extreme portable SSD, not the Pro, we're also going to look at that, but I'm going to plug it in to my computer and we're going to take a look at the speed of this device. And so I'll click allow. What you're looking at right now is the speed of my actual Mac. Now, my Mac is almost out of storage. So this is the read and write speeds that I got using these two different benchmark tools on the internal SSD on my Mac. But we're going to be looking at this particular drive that we've got connected here. So I'm going to go ahead and select it and we'll run this test and then we'll run the test in Blackmagic Design, which is a much faster test. So the reason that I'm doing two different tools here in doing this read and write test is simply so that you can get two different pictures of performance. In Amorphous Disk Mark, you're getting a much better look at read and write speeds based on general file usage and transfer. It's looking at four different types of read and write based on depths of writing that data. And so we'll see some different speeds here. And then with Blackmagic Design, it's basically telling us, is this disk fast enough to read and write specific types of video files, which is also a great benchmark to look at as well, especially if your main concern is video. So we'll be jumping around a little bit in this video because I don't expect you to sit here and watch all of these benchmarks. So we'll jump in and out as we get through these benchmarks and talk about each of these devices real quickly individually. You can also check out the links in the description below so that you can see pricing and size options as far as these SSDs so that you can compare the pricing and availability based on the performance that you see in this video and make your own choice. All right, Amorphous Diskmark has just finished. Let's do the Black Magic. We'll select the target drive just to make sure that we have the right drive selected. Click open and hit start test. And so we can see the speeds. Now, I'm not gonna explain the speeds on every test that we do here, but I want you to best understand how these two different tools work. The Blackmagic Design is basically looking at writing a two gig file, that's the size that we selected, was a two gig stress test. And essentially that means how fast can a two gig file be written to and read from this specific drive. And so it writes a file and then it reads a file and that's around the transfer speed that we can expect. Now, if we look at at amorphous disk mark, you can see that it has smaller numbers. So the reason that amorphous disk has smaller numbers essentially is because it's running a more real life stress test that's not just looking at reading and writing video files and giving us an idea of what kind of video files we can handle. So I like the amorphous disk mark better because it gives me a better overall picture of what life would look like with that disk. So with amorphous disk, you can see that there's four different tests that it ran in read and write. And it starts off with just basic file read and write in these two different levels, and then it goes to random. And so what it's doing with random and the reason that those numbers are so small is because it's writing to random parts of the disk as opposed to just writing to one location on the disk. If you're writing a file to a disk, it's writing it all in sequential order to one specific area on that disk. It's not writing it to all different random parts of that disk, which would be an inefficient way to write data. So these numbers down here better represent if you were trying to write multiple things to the disk at once from different areas of your computer. So the numbers that we're really interested looking at is the sequential writes, not necessarily the random writes, but it does give us a good look at the performance of a drive. And so we'll want to, of course, screenshot this so that we can compare some of these towards the end. The next drive we're looking at is the SanDisk Extreme Pro portable SSD. Uh, this is the Pro model, which has a higher read and write speed. Of course, it is a bit more expensive as well. So we'll go ahead and wait for it to populate here. We'll select it, make sure that we're selected correctly, and we will hit go. And just to prepare it, I'm gonna go ahead and select the target drive in Blackmagic as well so that it's ready to go. All right, we just finished those tests on the second SanDisk drive, which I'm now remembering is a bit older of a model and that might be why we're not seeing as big of a difference. So you wanna make sure if you're gonna go with the pro version of the drive that you're gonna go with a more updated version. This one I've realized I have had for a few years and the latest version of the Extreme Portable, which is this particular model, 
is much faster than the originals. I have some older versions of these and I imagine them being significantly slower than the updated model. So the Pro model, this being the older version of the Pro model, we're not seeing much of a difference there. The next drive we're gonna look at is the T7 Shield from Samsung. This is a newer model and so I'm expecting some pretty good numbers out of this particular drive. This is the first time that I'm using it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit allow and we're going to select it here and hit go and we'll see what we get. All right, some pretty confusing numbers coming out of the Samsung T7 Shield that has an advertised 1050 read and write. I even went and formatted the drive just to make sure and I'm actually gonna try and do that one more time just because I'm very confused at what this the results are on this drive that is not necessarily normal to see such a discrepancy in what we're able to see here. So I'm gonna run these tests again, just to make sure and give this drive a fighting chance. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and start with the black magic because I don't really wanna run the full amorph disc test again if I don't necessarily have to. Let's just try and see if we get anything better. With a format, I'm still not seeing anything better. And I've tried this formatted both as XFAT and formatted for the Mac specifically, and it's just not looking good. So this is either a defective drive or perhaps their advertised uh, transfer rates just aren't true to what we'd actually see in real life. Next, we're moving on to the Crucial X8. This is a four terabyte SSD. This is the first Crucial SSD that I've ever had before. So we're gonna plug that in and hit allow. We'll select the drive as it becomes available here, and we will select and hit go and start the test. Now, while we're running these tests, I just wanted to take a moment to mention the courses that we have available over at dailylearn.com. Now on Daily Learn, you can learn photography, website design, productivity, and there's much more to come. A lot of these courses are available for free, so make sure to check out the link in the description below to see some of the courses available from me on dailylearn.com. All right, so the Crucial X8 performed really well. It's on par with the SanDisk 4 terabyte, the first drive that we looked at, pretty close to the same read and write speeds, as you can see, and looking at the two different files here, if we compare them kind of side by side, they look pretty close to the same with not much of a difference between the two. And then over here with the Black Magic speed test, about 800 write and 850 read, pretty good out of the Crucial X8. Next, we're gonna take a look at the WD My Passport. This is a four terabyte SSD. Let's go ahead and plug it in. With the Passport selected, we'll go ahead and start the test. All right, we're finally seeing one pull out into the front, the WD My Passport with 772-ish read, 790 about write, an amorphous disc, and in the black magic, we can see 865 write and 872, 873 read. So far, this one is the fastest, even beating what was the Extreme Pro, the older edition, of course, of the Extreme Pro. We've got a couple more to go. Let's keep chugging along. All right, now we're gonna look at an enclosure that holds an actual SSD module. This would be an NVMe style solid state drive that you would put in a, a computer that supports it. This is an enclosure that you buy from Asus and then you add your own SSD, which means you can add any size SSD, usually up to around four terabytes, but they're making them larger now. I bought this this because I wanted to create my own and put my own SSD in it and we're gonna test it and compare it. This is a little bit older of a device, so I'm not 100% sure how well it's going to perform. It also is uh, about 78% full, so it doesn't have the available storage space of the other drives, so that might also factor into it not performing as well as some of the other drives, but we're gonna see. What's unique about this is that you add your own drive to it and that is what makes it different as opposed to all of these other drives that we've looked at come from the factory sealed with the solid state drive already in them. So with this, you can add a 512, a one terabyte, a four terabyte SSD inside of it, basically configure it however you want and then connect it over USB type C. And so far the numbers aren't looking too bad. Let's see how they end up. So I have to say I'm pleasantly surprised at the Asus performance considering how full it is and the fact that I've had this drive for a couple of 
years now. I actually made a video about building and putting this together and the initial tests. It's an older video on my channel, so if you are interested, you can definitely check that out. I'll link to it down in the description below. But you can see the performance in Amorphous Disk Mark. The performance is really good. It does have the latest USB protocols still, like the majority of these drives do, so that's where it gets its good performance. You can see down below as it starts to write more challenging data, and it starts to slow down, and that's probably due to the fact that the drive is more full. There isn't as much space to write all of that data. And then I did have a bit of a slow read mark over here when I did the Blackmagic disk test. I'm not sure exactly why it went that slow. Perhaps it's because it's got a bunch of cache. Oh, there we go. That's better performance there. So as you can see, really good performance on both of these tests, and I'm really surprised because this drive is, like I said, a few years old. It's some Something that you build yourself, not something that comes complete, but that means that you can put faster SSDs in here. You can buy a variety of different SSD NVMe drives, just like you can with these other drives, and that means you can build this out to be as fast as you need it to be. I'll make sure to link to the enclosure, as well as two options as far as speed and price point goes for SSDs in case you want to go the option of building your own. And the last drive we're going to look at is the G drive, which is actually from SanDisk as well. So we've got a lot of SanDisk drives represented here. G Drive is owned by SanDisk, and so we're going to check this out to see if it has any better performance than the other SanDisk drives that we've already looked at. So if you're a Mac user and you're looking for ways to get more storage space on your computer, definitely check out a recent video that I put out on five ways that you can improve the storage on your Mac. So definitely check out that video. There's lots of tips and tricks there to free up space and get more space available so that you can utilize more of your Mac. So I think we have a clear winner here with the G drive. This is very fast compared to the others with a read of 817 and a write of 972. This is as close to the advertised uh, read and write that we've gotten on any of these drives really. And so you can even see the performance is good on Blackmagic. If I ran that a couple more times, I think we'd get the read score up a little bit higher. What really stuck out to me is the random writes down here. We have seen in all of these other drives that we've looked at, very low, really. I mean, I guess the T7 Shield did okay on that particular benchmark, but most of these have really slow random memory read and write speeds, which means if you're copying multiple files and you've got multiple instances of files copying to a drive at once, this is going to be one of the faster drives for you. Now, as we close out this video, I do want to give the Samsung one additional try. I'm actually going to use the same cable that was connected to the G drive that we just tested and we could see was definitely fast. And I just, I feel like this Samsung just needs another try because Samsung drive typically are really good. I'm just going to do the black magic test here just to see if we get better read and write because I may just have to send this one back and see if there's an issue with it or perhaps if it was just the cable. And it's definitely not the cable. We're still seeing pretty slow read speeds out of this particular drive. So that's going to do it for this video. I hope that you found it useful. All these drives are different price points, some of them being on the cheaper side, some of them like the G drive being much more expensive. But you can see why some of these drives would be more expensive than the others. The performance when put under stress tests definitely shows that some of the more expensive drives tend to perform a little bit better. So based on the benchmarks that you saw here and the links in the description below, I hope that you make a good choice as far as expandable SSD storage goes for you. And if you want to build your own like I did with the Asus, check out the other video that I put out a while ago that I referenced. It'll show you how to build one of these and how to choose the right drive for it. I hope that you found this video useful. If you did give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel here on Daily Learn to be notified when I put out new ones. We'll see you in the next one.